Vici able to claim game one over Fun plus Phoenix. Now find themselves only one game away from what could be their last game of the 2018 spring split. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, I'm Dom. This is Clement. And it's time to get into what exactly Vici can do to win the next game. Because if you flip the question on the other side, what can FPX do to turn it around? The answer is fairly straightforward. Don't make mistakes. <laughs> so let's let's look at it from the other perspective. Let's right, look at right, it from right. Vici's side. Because you did answer that pretty, pretty quickly. <laughs> that was my answer as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So from Vici's side, uh, they just want to play a steady game and just try to continue to grow Easy Hoon as that roamer in the mid lane. He's mm -hmm. one of the players that almost never roams. The st stats don't look very pretty for him. And just to note that this game, they are not swapping in fire rain. They do want to end the split on a winning streak. So mm -hmm. they're not going to go for their sub. They're still going to stay with Easy Hoon. Yeah, well, that is a big plus for Vici if they are finding that stability in the roster because Fire Rain traditionally has been coming in after a loss. Yeah, and so... It, there is a chance for us to see him in Game 3 if, if they there go is. that far. Yeah. But you don't want to go to Game 3. I mean, I want to go to Game 3 because Game 3 is more exciting. But <laughs> uh, Vici don't because they want their third series win. Don't think about it too hard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say, <laughs> so uh, just to direct that a little bit, yeah. uh, the reason they aren't swapping in Fire Rain is I, I still feel Fire Rain, even though he has potential, is a very, very green player. Yeah, absolutely. He has uh, one of the uh, – so the stat that really stands out for him is he actually has the lowest kill participation out of any player in the LPL so far. So yeah. uh, getting it the right place at the right time is still the big problem for him. It's not even about mechanics or laning. It's just about, like – reading the mentality and how the flow of the game actually is going to go in a professional uh, mm -hmm. professional setting. So I'm not surprised that they want to lock it down with Easy Hoon and try to get a win here. Yeah, and of course, Easy Hoon, the world champion of SKT, of one of the six-man roster to help lock down that uh, big title. It's certainly not something that you just kind of gloss over yep. for this team. But of course, that being said, Fire Rain, last time he came in, it was against WE, Shie specifically. We got to see him play Zoe. And that was not exactly a spectacular performance from him. I think you mentioned it the best. He looked very green. He didn't yes. know how to play around the lane. He didn't know when he should roam, when he should stay. Look for assassinations and pick up spells versus dying. Yeah, he's a, basically a stock for the future. Not, not really yeah. something you talk about in the present. But uh, props to Vici Gaming. That was actually their first win in eight tries. So Ooh, uh, eight they, they're coming off an eight game losing streak, finally able to find one here. And hopefully that will be a morality boost to them to kind of clean up their game so far. I don't like the game plan they had for game one. I don't think it really fits their style. I think this is a team that still needs late game insurance. BG? Vici. Oh, yeah, but it I, worked. Swift was controlling it, it the map. Easy Hoon was roaming. Because FPX is <laughs> FPX, okay? That's not going to work against any other okay, team. There's, yeah. Like, that's the type of game that, as an analyst, like, I, I really don't like. Like, I, I won't say don't like, but it, it gives yeah. me a hard time casting yes. because nothing makes sense and everything is bad. <laughs> so it's like, I, they to should the LPL do this where the points are made there, up and, and, uh, but else they're matters. not going to do it. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's the entirety of the LPL. I'll make it very clear. This is just FBX. It's just but FBX. That, that has to be said, though, that neither of these teams have qualified for playoffs. So no. this does not affect the standings. This does not affect anything. This is just for these two teams to move forward into 2018. So we've already heard about Vici playing for blue slips, pl or sorry, playing for pinks, playing for the opportunity to stay with the team in the summer. Um, because this is statistically the worst team in the league right now, though that win gets them one step closer to T.O.P. Yeah, definitely. Uh, being in the franchise means that the teams now do have the resources from revenue sharing to shore up the roster whenever they want. And I can yeah. guarantee you none of these bottom teams from the LPL are happy sitting down there. Yeah. So we've yeah. recently heard from like T.O.P.'s manager. He said, you know, you get what you pay for. And uh, he, he got Marin after that straightforward. Mm -hmm. Pepper Look here. Uh, Pepper head in his hands, looking mentally defeated and exhausted after that game one. That is a juicy close up. <laughs> that man. <laughs> He does right. not look happy. The contrast Sorry, that's, that's between the you and, uh, and a pepper was pretty yeah. pretty hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> but I will say that game, the team did ban out four junglers for him. They, they wanted did. him yes. to have a very strong early and mid game. However, even though he did get that, he really did throw the game in that Baron. If you wanted to get a fight around that Baron, you should have waited for the other side, the three-man from Vici, to come in, mm -hmm. rather than throwing it at the very mobile Nidalee. Yeah. I think that was a huge mistake, and it was just a 
Just something that players need to learn with understanding and experience. Yeah, if you we, want the fight, go for the fight. We talked about it so many times during that game. V FPX have a composition that doesn't exactly thrive running into Vici's composition, though they were able to sort of take those fights back and forth. Still, pick and ban game two on your screen right now. You can see some bans. Zyab actually banned away from FPX, and Cool will snipe away that rise, though that could be flexed up to Gimgoon. Swain and Sejuani, immediate follow-ups from Vici. You definitely don't want the Sejuani to go back to Pepper, and I like the rise for Cool. It's a champion that allows him to impact the map earlier on. Do things with Pepper, you know, be that aggressive duo that you've been uh, locked in to do. Now we're looking for the follow-up for FPX. Pepper, again, he looked so defeated right here. Does he just go for something comfortable in what could be his last game of the 2018 LPL Spring? Could the emotions of not being able to make the playoffs actually be affecting him this much? As Jarvan, the comfort pick is locked in for him, but even in front of the faces of his fans, it looks like he's going through some turmoil, some struggle. Cool. Uh, those were cool fans, by the way. I'm saying the FPX fans oh, okay, in general. Okay, Clement. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that support. <laughs> Fine. I'm just reading the you, signs. You want to solo cast? Signs. You can solo cast. Uh, oh, tell, oh, tell, tell me what's I'll going on. I'll here. take a shot at it. So, <laughs> so they, they have an obviously very powerful uh, mid lane jungle duo. It's they one do. that can bully up people early. You know, he has a wave clear push. If that will be a uh, Swain in the mid lane. And Jarvan in the LPL, in the LCK as well, is known for that level two gank. So they're looking for a very strong early game, and they're also going to be able to set it up with a very strong level one going into it. That's already double CC picked by their compositions. If I'm a coach, if I have a strong level one team, I'm always going to use that. I'm always going to head straight into your jungle, try to get some vision down, and then snowball that further down the line. Mm. Could be a decisive setup from FPX if they want to look for that snowball sort of cheese early on, interrupt the cheering, if you will. But, of course, that's going to be decided by the remainder of the picks for FPX in what could be their last game. Kai'Sa Band, that just, I don't, stop it. I like that champion. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Like, there's the Kog'Ma, there are, there's tons of hyper carries that LWX is already known for. There's Ferris, um, but you ban away the I just don't understand. There's still no AD carry for Snow either, so maybe they're expecting yep. the counter on the other side. Well, they are banning away champions that he's very good at. Jin is the uh, the other one. I think the big point about these two AD carries is that their teams all need hyper hyper carries. Yes. So I think the biggest one to look for is if Tristana is open, I think FAX is going to be very happy taking away the Tristana. Uh, no problem for them. For uh, for Snow, he's a bit of a different player. He's much more Caitlyn Jin early game style player, even though his team goes more toward the late game. So I think FPX, they should try to get something for the later game. L he does this every time. <laughs> yeah. It's probably going to be the Kog'Maw, unless he swaps at the last second to a Tristana or something. He's thinking but about it. That, it's like, this that, is my last is, chance. It, you're right. It, it is <laughs> the moment for LWX, the shotgun of the LPL, the buck back. He does take go, the Kog'Maw go. into that Jin Alistar. He's already got the Braum, so that is a pretty strong level one. Get, get a tank. Oh, boy. Get a tank here. Pick so a the tank rise, for the top the lane. rise could be flexed. That is true. Uh, I just want to see a tank so they can have something to stand in front of the Jin, but they're not going to go for that. Going to go for the game plank instead. At least this is a champion that can't split push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's actually good for <laughs> FBX. It's very easy to just press the cannon barrage. I mean, he did such a great job in that side lane too. He was CS up. He was pushing the wave. He was going one versus two. It's, it's never been about his individual mechanics in the side lane uh, for Gingun. Yes. It's, it's always been about how far you push and when you collapse. And Gingun has been, he's, he's really been on the bottom of the barrel in terms of those two uh, decision-making times. If you look at Zatai, I think he does it much more cleanly. It's, it's kind of like Gingun steps into the ring with the shy and it's an entertaining match. They actually go head-to-head, -head and it's pretty even in terms of skill. But then FPX goes up against Vici with the context of Gimgun and the Shy, and it's a completely different game. Oh, I thought you were going to go Gimgun then steps onto the Rift, and then it looks a lot different. <laughs> oh, oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, savage. All right, all right. So the team composition <laughs> we do have here, uh, we will see that... Uh, Again, Easy Hoon is actually playing for a lane priority with the Orianna right there. This yeah. is a big change up for him. Now, he used to be one of the slower players, always going for the Azir. He does have a skin on that. 
Uh, but this time around, he does want to match Cool and match Pepper in terms of that early aggression. And they do have the team composition to play earlier and play that late game. Mm -hmm. For FBX, I think they heard Frost Curran's call. They're going for something late game and not necessarily a 4-1 composition. It's a better 5v5 composition and a more standard one. Yeah, it's a lot safer for them. If the game ever ends up getting dragged out like it did in that previous match, if FBX aren't able to play their aggressive, chaotic, snowball style, that has been the linchpin to their success when it succeeds. He doesn't have a uh, gap closer this time. So, uh, who? LWX? LWX, yeah. Okay. So right. that's, that might potentially improve his play. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, Look, you can always game. face flash into the enemy, you could, which you could. he has done on Kog'Ma. <laughs> I just want to point that out. It's not quite West levels um, of IG versus uh, WE, but certainly could be up there. But that being said, this could be the final game for both of these teams for at least a few months as the LPL playoffs are about to kick off and neither of these teams are going, let alone to MSI and the offseason and beyond. The final game before what could either be vacation or a long break to practice. We load onto the rift for game two. Well, we come back to the rift, we can already see Crisp looking for that potential level one. Does spot out Caveman. Places a ward. Easy Hoon will now show himself. He is taking that airy as his standard on the Orianna, but still the fans continue to cheer these teams on despite the mistakes FPX made, despite Vici's current place at the bottom of the standings. These are teams with very well-known players that everyone should be proud to follow here in the LPL. Looking and with down at the runes, yep. uh, everything's standard, actually. <laughs> well, there, there you go. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, looks like bottom side jungle start from the two. <laughs> yeah, it is standard. I mean, we do see Meow also taking Aerie on the top half of the map. Can't exactly shield allies, but does mean that he has pretty yep. moderate damage We've, output. We've uh, heard this discussion a couple times. Usually in the top lane, you do want the Aerie just for extra damage. We have seen the phase shift as well, but that's more of a late game thing. It doesn't really help you that much in lane. Only 15% move speed in the first level. So uh, a lot of people, especially Zoom, really start this trend on the Aerie swaying into the top lane. Not seeing it utilized too much as it's just standard farming in the bottom lane. We talked about the chance that we might see some aggressive cheese to sort of snowball the game. Not seeing too much here as level 2 is the priority and the junglers are just going buff to buff. This is a very dangerous lane for uh, the Kog'Ma to play in. If you look at the CC combination from Vici, he's oh, pretty yeah. much always in range. The follow-up is also very dangerous for him as well. That's where we look to the trust fall for Crisp. Can he protect LWX and keep that pupper dog alive? Swift spotted out by a ward. We'll see Pepper, who just immediately engages onto Easy Hoon and forces the flash. There it is. That it's was not the level two, the level very three. Very slow reaction from uh, Easy Hoon, actually, because I, I do believe the ward was spotted by Swift as he went over, but still has to burn the flash in reaction. Just needs to make sure that the Jarvan is actually ganking and not just walking through the lane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Swift actually spotted out Pepper there, but still was able to get the flash. So a little bit of unexpected errors right there. Probably the communication not being on point between Easy Hoon and Swift. Hmm. Though we now see Meow actually pushing up very far forward in this top lane, trading with Gimgoon. He heals up using his own health as bait. Pepper with red buff. He lands the slow. Meow! Oh, he can't make up his mind, and he's going to die because of it. It's a uh, sad life. He knows life. he's going to die. Doesn't use any summoner spells, doesn't do anything. Yeah, just got caught out in a very bad place. Allowed Gimgoon to hold the wave that close to the tower, and uh, you know, just That's this is kind of a rookie mistake, to be honest. A level three Jarvan gank. He's already showed himself mid, and you die top. That's 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 a bit in inexcusable. Mm -hmm. Swift is hovering on the bottom side, thinking that he might swoop through the tri bush, but instead just. Heads back over towards his Gromp as this wave is pushed very far forward. You already mentioned how dangerous it is with the CC combo. Yep, you can see they're already holding their waves here. They have the vision control on the bottom side of the map. And just look at LWX's positioning. He's going nowhere near the minion waves. You really got to hate it when that happens. 
When, when you see the enemy start to freeze the wave and you're like, no, I just I want the minions. And then the worst part is that you have to sit and watch. Oh, yeah. And then they, you know, get a big minion wave and dive you on the next turn around. <laughs> That's what yeah, happens. That's yeah, how pro because professional it bounces games back. are played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pro play. So I, I don't have the experience of seeing that on the pro stage. I have the experience of seeing it on a solo queue stage. And that's uh, also a painful scenario to find yourself in. So we are seeing a bit of alleviation coming out from Pepper here, trying to get his bot lane back into the game. <laughs> Gimgoon, quick on the trigger as ever. And yeah, now the pressure is starting to alleviate just a bit, as you said, down in that bottom lane. LWX catching the minion waves as it pushes in. No dive because Swift is clearing out on his top side. Look at the wards yeah, that's on the top half control. of the map from FPX. That was great play from Gingu. Uh, I didn't really check if he got anything from the Kleptomancy, but he was able to check out Swift's positioning and get out safe enough as well. There he goes. Swift now spots out Pepper invading. He has no smite. Sorry, Swift has no smite. And that will be the stun oh. actually interrupting. I okay. suppose canceling the dragon strike. Yeah, still, uh, still gets the dragon strike. How, however, mm -hmm. does, does just walk out. Interesting. He was making the animation, but it ended up being canceled by the stun. A bit of a preemptive stun from Swift. If that was midair, then that might have ended a bit differently. Yep. We do have to note that all Pepper really wants to do is track Swift. Mm -hmm. As long as he can keep a tab on Swift, the bot lane's going to be fine. They can CS okay, and they can scale towards the late game. He doesn't necessarily need to fight them or just gank any lane, all his mission is is just to track. And that's exactly what we see from FPX. Not only did Gimgoon step into the jungle to place wards, but even Cool in the mid lane is burning through his mana aggressively so he can step into the river and track where that Sejuani is going. Is she level 6 yet? Is she level 5? Do I have to worry about a flash headbutt? Yeah, really, really well played from FPX. They know their, uh, their objectives incredibly well. And just to note, Cool is willing to use all of his minion dematerializers early on just to get vision. Every kind of minion wave we spotted, he just uh, he just puts the minion dematerializer down and then goes ahead into the jungle. Mm -hmm. and we can see it's starting to work a little bit for Cool's favor, as he is now just a handful of CS ahead, constantly pushing Easy Hoon in in this matchup on that Orianna. And still, as is expected, Swift, the intelligent jungler, does have a CS advantage over FPX, one or two camps ahead, but still right, constant tracking. That's the knockup. Electrocute for some early bursts. He's trying to body block the headbutt. Stun is ready, but Swift is able to headbutt to safety. Cool will help invade on this blue buff, and look at the timer for FPX. They've got enough time to get across the map and defend their own. Yep, there's no chance that Vici is going to contest this, and this is going to give Rise a lot of pushing potential. Usually we talk about the Orianna as being a counter towards the Rise. This is a counter pick that Rookie really started to popularize in the LPL, mm -hmm. but this is not going to be the case. Uh, she isn't going to have the mana to outpush the Rise at this point. For the time being, oh, easy Hoon. Oh, even getting denied the recall. Steps over into the vision. That's a knockup. Shockwave is ready if Easy Hoon wanted to try and fight Pepper here, but he's still got his own flash to try and reaction dodge it. The wave was attempted to be stalled by Crisp down here. Still keeps it outside of the tower range, so well done right there. And FPX? Still FPX. They are just playing this side of the map. And I really like this look of FPX far more than I liked them in the previous game. When they can get cool rolling with them, they can do so many other things. Over the wall and out of there. Never move doesn't catch them in midair. Pepper and Cool are displaying some completely unprecedented synergy. Where was this last game? Where was this two weeks ago when Cool first joined? The difference is that Cool is on a pick where he can actually push the wave. He took the minion dematerializer mm. for it. And with the lane priority, Pepper is able to track Swift. So they really open up the entire center of the map. This quarter, uh, this square between the four buffs is usually where we say the uh, the duo between mid and jungle are going to play. It's a 2v2 square, basically. And they're the ones that are coming out ahead in the ring. Yeah, it seems like this is more the comfort for FPX. That cool is on that rise. That Pepper is on his comfort pick, Jarvan. Whereas in the last game, you had Sejuani, which is a great champion that Pepper is pretty comfortable on. But cool on the Swain maybe just didn't quite match up with with it, especially when there is a Nidalee on the other side. This time, Swift on that Sejuani, nowhere near as mobile, though he is sure as hell trying. 
He's just being tracked everywhere. Yeah, he just can't get out of the vision of the FPX, and this is the style that suits FPX better. Yes, they have LWX, who is a known hyper late game carry, but they are still very much an early game team. Mm -hmm. They snowball off of that early games, and when they don't have good early games, they fall behind very far, or they make yes. a lot of mistakes. That has been the FPX trend that we've been seeing so far. So. Props on them going back to a, a, a curve, a power curve that they're much more comfortable on. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting to see a team, instead of fixing mistakes, change styles to something else. Oh, yeah. So that there's no chance of them making the mistakes. But of course, as I say that, there are still plenty of opportunities for this game to go awry. <laughs> as we're only 10 minutes in and it's only a thousand gold lead for FPX. Infernal Dragon is the first, so there is pretty moderate incentive for these teams to keep control on the bottom half. So far, Snow and Caveman have been pushing happily to maintain vision down there. Yep. And Pepper is already threatening a gank into the bot lane with the Infernal Drake. This is a very high priority gank. Caveman's actually roaming up towards the mid lane and Swift is hovering just outside. No cleanse, Shockwave, the CC chain and the snare knock up. Oh, and Swift snipes away the kill from Snow. But still, that's Vici bringing four members. They set up the trap and Cool steps right in. That was beautiful to watch. However, I, I do have to nitpick a little bit, point out a mistake. Snow should not have used his current call right there. Uh, he's it's actually going to put him in, he wanted in a the bit kill. of a, yeah. It's going to put him in a dangerous position when he goes back and tries to wave clear. Because if Jarvan didn't show up uh, mid, he would have showed up bot. Mm, <laughs> but yeah. you know that was great participation from VG team members right there. Ooh, teleport cataclysm. Easy Hoon will use his flash. His cool teleports in onto a dead ward to make his way back into lane. And recall completed now from the bottom lane of LWX. He's getting closer to his Gwinsus, though we do see a bit of this jungle pressure alleviated by FPX because of that kill onto Cool. I say that and then they immediately roam. Never mind. I take it back. There is no alleviation of pressure. And FPX will actually take away the Infernal Drake for their troubles. Well, I should hope so. Cool died. If they didn't get anything for Cool dying, that would feel pretty bad. That would feel <laughs> not cool. <Yo. laughs> there it is. There it is. That's what I'm talking about, Clement. That's it. <laughs> Welcome to the LPL English casting team, where we make puns and the points don't matter. <laughs> uh, I, I, I still think my points matter, but, but <laughs> anyway, go, go back to the game. Go back to the game. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, right, I, mean, I, I, I know what you see yeah, of yeah, me yeah. now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. Want you to know what we really feel in the LPL. Let's, let's lay it all out there. All right, Squash okay. beef. Don't, don't let anything hang out. Caveman's actually really far forward. Oh, he had the Mobies. That's why. Yep. And uh, Swift is still looking for the gank down in the bottom lane. You know, he just came he's out of base. He's been looking for a while though. Oh, he's been pinged out though. Spotted well in advance by an early ward placed by Pepper and Cool. Look at all that vision. They see everything. They, they see everything. Yeah. And Wait. the goggles. They do nothing. The goggles? The goggles! Who has goggles? Nobody! They do nothing! Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> it's a meme. All right, all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, you know, uh, I guess you have to wear goggles. You know how anime characters have goggles sometimes? No. For no reason? And they never wear the, the goggles? Bot lane. Look at the bot lane. They're, what's happening in the bot lane? Uh, they were trying for a 4v1 collapse uh -huh. as the blue buff. Oh, onto went down. snow. You yeah, onto snow. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. That grenade bounce hurt just a bit. But as I was saying, yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> anime characters wear goggles for no reason. They never wear them. The goggles do nothing. Uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> so. If you say so, man. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, this is a discussion you should be having with Pulse. Absolutely. Yeah, he's he's the weeb lord of the of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> lord weeb. <laughs> we'll we'll call up Avali and get her opinion as well. For sure, for and sure. <laughs> the interviewers just tonight. <laughs> Calmly agree. I don't know what they're talking about. I'll just let this continue happening. It's FPX invading still. Pepper now skirmishing over this red buff. Gimgoon brought down to help him out. Even Cool was waiting just outside of Vision. Didn't have the uh, mana to complete a Realm Warp, but still is able to keep it safe. Oh, Chris blasts the sun. That was a great wall to block that deadly flourish. Though it looks like a line, it is in fact a projectile. Yep, and they managed to get out of everything alive. So FBX game plan still working out so far. You know, using the mid jungle duo to try and keep the bot lane alive. But this 4v2 coming on, can they actually hold it? Already we're seeing LWX and Chris back away. Cannon Barrage onto the minion Both wave. Ways. Who needs to teleport? 
when you can just clear out the minions with one pushable. This is a really smart strategy from FBX. Actually, all the early pieces are just there to keep LWX alive and well into the late game. And if he doesn't drop the ball, they will have the better late game team fighting composition as well. Uh, uh actually, not exactly. <laughs> Actually, I need to walk back my statement a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Ex explain. All right. So the problem is that Oriana is a very hard counter to uh, Kogma. You just mm -hmm. place the ball down and you cut a path away from the Kog. Kind so, of like a discount Miasma. Yeah. The Kogma can't walk anywhere near the ball. So you, you can zone very effectively there. And uh, also, if the Kogma wants to play frontline, there's also the Jin as well. So... So looking at the compositions, I actually think that FPX might have to get have creative. To, yeah, get creative and get uh, use the Ginsu Rage Blade Power Spike. Use the mid game a bit better. They probably aren't looking so favorably at that late game five v five. Well, they've got one Infernal Dragon. The next will also be an Infernal Dragon, and Rift Herald is on the map. So there are plenty of things for them to turn their attention towards. It's Gimgoon continues to trade with Meow. That lane has evened out despite the initial gank that Gimgoon got. Wow, that was tough to say. Yep, so Pepper still looking for an inside route towards the bot lane. He's going to catch Swift right here. Yeah, they still have got so much vision on this side. I like how he's, he sees him in the jungle and then ducks into the brush like, I don't think he saw me. Of course he saw you. You he, were right there. He doesn't know if uh, Rise or Braum were there waiting for him. Uh, so he just yeah, does yeah. the safe thing. He's like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> Places the ward and just leaves. Instantly queues away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pepper. You're trying. You're trying, bud. Yeah, they haven't been able to like really cash in their advantages so far. They've been tracking Sidrani very well. You know, they've kept their bot lane alive. But uh, you know, Sidrani Swift is still farming okay. Mm -hmm. They still have the late game to look forwards to. It is up to FBX to make a play here around the mid. Seems as though they're constantly roaming, constantly looking, but Vici are just staying safe in their lanes. As I say that, Pepper might be heading mid. He's pinging towards it, but Swift is already there. Perhaps a gank top instead. Pepper, given the on my way ping, cool level 11 with Realm Warp. What is the wave situation? Okay. It is a cannon wave. Kim it's all Goon's prepped and ready. Pushing. Meow's only got one soul shard. And Pepper has found him. Demonic Ascension. Visions of War, he flashes away. Cool. Not taking aggro just yet. Finally, he is able to pick it up. There's the Cataclysm. Have they got the burst to end it out? He's in the minion wave. Cool. It's still so tanky. They get a kill, but what do they trade for it? They're going to trade the bot lane tower for it. Hopefully, they do get the first break into the top lane. But if you look at FBX members, they're actually playing with so much restraint this time around. They haven't been in a position where they could be targeted in a 4v2 scenario. And look at this. It's going to take them so much HP to really clear out this bot tower. This is going to give a lot of time on FBX on the map to make plays and make rotations. And look, they're going straight for the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Five seconds before that Infernal Dragon spawns, and you talked about who... Uh, sorry, the HP cost to take that turret. That's Swift's health. That's the jungler's. The dragon has started off, but already Crisp is here. Those Mobies getting him right into the fight. He drops the ward. Swift set to clear it out. Smite is nearly there. Teleport coming in from Meow. That's a good shockwave to force him back. Pepper person. over the wall steals the second Infernal. He immediately follows up, but they manage to kill Crisp in the front line. Meow trades his life back over. No Demonic Ascension just yet. Flash and Vici scatter. Yep, they are able to take down Meow in the front lines, getting caught by a rune prison, and also the surprise steal coming out from Pepper right there. It's uh, I actually felt like Vici could have ha found their footing and had a better fight in that scenario, but uh, they really weren't prepared for it. That's that's a problem. I think you can see that Snow was still in range to get CC'd, so he didn't uh, in range to get hit by the Braum ultimate, so he didn't use his his ult in return, mm -hmm. and uh, the setup there was a bit lackluster for Vici Gaming. It was a fight they could have taken, but really we just weren't prepared for the uh, the incoming assault from Pepper. Great stun block as well. Just realized now that he was able to absorb that. Of course, the teleport coming in to allow Gimgoon to join the fight for even more damage. As Wits End is now on the docket for LWX, he's on the way to producing it. Triforce has been finished by Gimgoon. Abyssal Mask is ready for cool. And we did see the Rift Herald get taken by FPX during that replay. That's sitting in Pepper's back pocket. So this time it's FPX who are controlling these neutral objectives. And it's not through terrifically risky plays. They're just yeah. playing the map and they're playing their power spikes against Vici. 
I think that's a great thing for FPX. One of the things we complain about this team is that they're immensely talented. However, they haven't been able to bring their talent together in a cohesive and logical fashion. You know, they, they take a lot of weird fights. They're basically still playing as if their talent alone is enough to carry them. And I like this look from FPX. It's very controlled. It's measured. It's trading objectives intelligently. There's a lot of restraint on their bottom lane for not going too far forwards. They've never, Vici's never been able to catch LWX and uh, Crisp this game in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Just playing safe and defensive, allowing themselves to hold on because it's not season three anymore. You don't have the chance to single-handedly carry and win a game. It's season eight, five years since then. And still, we're seeing the adaptation is not only is it raw talent, but also macro and shot calling that determines matches. Yep. Ma max range visions of Empire will try to clear out this wave as we got an, as we have another turret trade. But look at how much easier it is for Gimgoon to step up and start clearing out those turrets. Sorry, those minions, as compared to the Swain on the other side. Jin is pretty terrible in terms of like trading towers early on. Uh, not a lot of AD early, and uh, just not a lot of wave clear either. So uh, with Gimgoon defending that tower is able to take it down. And this has been a much better game from Gimgoon. The cannon barrage usage. Every time he's used it, it's for oh, the trades. Warp. Whoa! They've managed to pick off Caveman. Oh, that's actually a CC chain that they teleport themselves into. Gimgoon tries to catch up. Caveman, he's used the ultimate. He's got damage reduction, but he's only level 10. It's not quite enough. They chase him down. That's Shockwave pulls them back in, and Pepper trades his life over. That's the curtain call. Cool. Sidesteps one to get out of the range, but now he's pinned to the corner by Swift. The bullet hits, and Snow picks up the kill. One step too far from Pepper right there. If you look at Snow, he was holding on to his ultimate, holding on to the curtain call, waiting for the Glacial Fissure to come down. And once that skill is down, he instantly opens up and fires on the FPX squad right there. A bit of an overreach, a bit of a poor setup from FPX, but uh, the idea was solid. Certainly was. And with that, Vici are going to pick up a few kills. They're still down about 3,000 gold, which is not going to be helping them in these upcoming fights, but if they can bait FPX into positions like that again, that could be an opportunity for them to try and get back into this game. Because here's that fight again. It's FPX looking for a pick and going just a bit too far. Yep, they're going on two very tanky members here. Uh, of course, with the frozen armor, Swift isn't really afraid of this. Here's the flash into the triple. Shockwave. Gets, yeah, yeah, gets Pepper back, even though he's already used his flash to get away. And you have to remember, this is a very fragile Pepper. It's a Black Cleaver Warrior Pepper. And just knocking him back into the range of Snow mm. right there. Uh, very good uh, very good coordination. If there's one thing that Snow does know, it's uh, geometry. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Cool backed into a corner by that, as Rift Herald was just used bottom side. Gimgoon doesn't have teleport, and he's currently hanging out what in what appears to be the mid lane. This is a very opportunistic Herald, I would say. It's he, more of the uh, draw everyone bottom. I mean, it could bottom. be trying to pull the attention of Vici towards that bottom half of the map, because Baron is up, and FPX are sweeping out Vision over here. Look at that double sweeper used already. There is one ward in the pit. Gimgoon nearly has his teleport. He nearly has his cannon barrage. He's just going to try to pull as much attention as he can. Even Swift is on this side of the map. The more people he keeps here, the more free FPX are to try and sweep out Vision around the Baron. This is what Gimgoon does best. He's a great distraction. A lot of people want to try and go kill Gimgoon, and they often don't end up succeeding. He has the mechanics to really dance around this area. There's the charge. Meow. Oof. Catches Chelly as she's rearing her head. Bit of a tragedy that Chelly didn't get to charge, but still eight kills on this game, 23 minutes in. Baron is on the map. Teleport and Cannon Barrage are ready. Along with Yomu's finished off for Gimgoon, as we've got double items starting to be picked up by FPX, who are looking to bring us to a game three as they are picking up momentum. They're hunting down a pick. Realm Warp once again sends Pepper into the back line. He's dropped the Cataclysm on the Caveman, and that's going to be the kill. Oop, wall finally dropped. That was a great play from FPX, leveraging the 131 and collapsing instantly onto the mid lane right there. FPX, they need to look for very decisive picks because Vici Gaming have a very good counter engage composition. That said, without their support, it's going to be real difficult to keep Easy Hoon, to keep Snow alive, as Gimgoon is just working on this turret. He's got it down to half, and Yomu's lets him just turn around and walk away from the Swain. As he I continues like to heal up, and look at this, the next dragon has spawned already. Hard, hard to believe. And it's a third Infernal. 
Oh wow, and that's gonna give FBX a late game. This is that third Infernal, that 24% extra AD AP. <laughs> what, it wasn't the Rise? It wasn't the Kog'Maw? Oh well, no. It wasn't the Gangplank? No, no, Kog'Maw is Kogma much more mid game. Uh huh. <laughs> this time around, but. It was the third Infernal. Holy cow, that's a lot of damage. All right, this, is, this changes a lot of dynamics because, you know, I, I really think it forces Vici to be the aggressive ones now. Mm -hmm. Like, Vici are gonna have to look at this game and it's like, you know, we have this game plan to wait for LWX to make a mistake and we're gonna snipe him out with Easy Hoon, like with the Shockwave, with the, with the current call, but we can't do that really anymore. Like, they can just stand back and infinitely scale up and be that much stronger than us. Like, we, we can't let the late game actually happen anymore. Imagine an Elder Dragon on top of that. That is, those are big numbers. Yep, you can get all the way up to 48%. Extra ADAP. Nearly 50. Holy cow. Um, we're not seeing that just yet. Still plenty of time before that happens as the next dragon will be in ocean. LWX still only at two items. Whoa there, Chris. This and he missed the knockup. Snow is going to fire across. Pepper looking for the knockup. He's found Easy Hoon. He's still holding on to Flash. Pepper goes too deep and dies. That's the jungler gone. Clement, I think that might be the mistake you were looking for. Caveman might actually just die to the Baron here. Cool just needs to keep Baron aggroed, and it will do all of the hard work yep. for him. He has no flash. One for one trade. I would still say that was in favor of Vici, however. Uh, there is no, yeah. yeah, there's no no actual Baron pressure coming out. But they do get the flash from Easy Hoon, so that's another soft target that they can look to pin down in the next team fight. We're not seeing too much. Uh, too many mistakes from FPX outside of overextending. I mean, that was a calculated play. They had the right idea. It just the execution ended up being a bit too far. They didn't have vision past that river to see the Sejuani, to see the rest of Vici, to see Snow opening up the curtain call. Yeah, if they so, could have gotten Orianna there, that, that would have been a straight Baron, so I could really see the attempt here. If we look at it again, I guess the exhaust. Wow, that's such good footwork from Easy who dodging to the right side and getting away from that, not even getting hit by the EQ, and then curving around and killing... Pepper. That was that was straight up Star Wars A New Hope. Hold on, kid. I've got some maneuvers. Steps slightly to the right. And dodges out of that. I'm not a Trekkie, but I'm not a Star Wars fan either. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. Thank you no. for telling me. <laughs> yeah, but it was really, really, uh, really good work from Easy Hoon right there. With the positioning and the maneuvering around. I, it feels like the same problem occurred for FPX. They saw the play. They had the mechanics to make the play happen. They didn't have the preparation to see it beforehand, to see the wards behind, to make sure the flash was already burned, that they could actually catch Easy Hoon. Honestly, I feel like it was Chris's mistake. Uh, he should mm -hmm. have tried for the winter bite, Winter's Bite after the exhaust, but went straight for the ultimate. Didn't really get to slow off, and uh, Easy Hoon was able to wiggle out of that. That he did. Still... Two thirds of that flash cooldown remaining, but already look at the vision control. Now they have learned from their mistakes so far. There's no teleport for Gimgoon, and they're actually going to start turning onto this Baron. They've got a lot of shred on that Kogma. Swift steps forward. He's clearing out a ward. Crisp is there to body block, and if the support is there, there's it's one assault. reason for him. Curtain call is opened up, but Baron already picked up by FPX. Great game from them. That triple Infernal Drake really paying off. A lot of people think about uh, the Mountain Drake as being good for objectives, but you have to remember. The extra AD against the Baron is also very useful. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like 2.6 Mountain Drakes, basically, for them. So they yeah. will burn around, burn down that objective incredibly fast. And Gimgoon was still split pushing the entire time. Working on that bottom tier two, you can already see he's got a CS advantage over Meow. All six assists, as he has 100% kill participation along with Pepper. Yep, he's showing that he has more in the back rather than a split pusher. He can still play those... Uh, champions that not don't necessarily push in the bottom lane, the, the side lanes, but mm -hmm. can still contribute in terms of the big team fights. Now we don't see a banner of command from FPX, so this is going to be a standard siege. It looks like a 1-3-1, one, one, though Cool is on the top half, and Vici might be attempting to prey on that as he is now heading to group up with his team through the vision. Vici, like a shark, they are just outside of his vision, hovering, waiting for him to take a step in the wrong direction. But Cool, ever the intelligent veteran, just walks back toward the mid lane nice and slow. FBX do have the inner track here. They did spread out Vici and free bottom lane tower. Like, Vici's not even going to contest. Bottom tier two goes down. Cool steps forward to help his team take the mid tier two. Again, no contest. 
You mentioned that AD and AP, plus Baron is massive damage onto these turrets. And I now, really do want to see the numbers on the Kogma currently. <laughs> he's real big. Big pupper, 14, level 14, sorry. Gets his red buff, just hovering back and forth. Ping now onto the top tier two. That's an on-hit build with 299 damage. Oh yeah, Thanks. AD, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's going to hurt, and who has armor on that team? Swift? Ninja Tabby for the Swain? They do have a Warden's Mail, but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun LWX time. absolutely is going to start that doing That Blade of the Ruin King is going to hurt. Oh, yeah. Now the wave crashes in. Snow steps forward, but Vici looks like the call is to just give it up. Sacrifice this part of the map. Try to lose elegantly and not end up getting caught to this massive power spike from FBX. Still, it seems like that's not even an option anymore. Gimgun is pushing onto the inhibitor. If he's been consistently doing that, he does have the, uh, uh, what is it called? The double green swords? Oh, Phantom, Phantom Dancer. Dancer. Yeah, he does have the Phantom Dancer for the side, lay, uh, side wave push. So he has been uh, out pushing Mail for the entirety of the game. I really like the way he plays it. He just doesn't force full on engages from Mial. He knows that he can go get away from him with the never move. He can just use the orange to cleanse that. Mm -hmm. So he's just going in, getting a bit of chip, and then backing out. So. While this is set up, Baron's about to wear off in about 30 seconds, and Ocean Dragon is the next follow-up from that. And he picks a side. i got to ask you a question, Clement. Is Gimgun the kind of guy that you would have on your solo queue ranked team? If you queued up and Gimgun was on your team and you were a pro player, how would you feel about that? Uh, in would, my would solo queue tier, with my well, ratings, I mean, of course. <laughs> I, I'm imagining, of course, like even play level, this style of player, oh. the aggressive solo side player. Whoa, are we going to get a dropship? We are. Five members, and immediately the fight breaks out. Shockwave right on top of it, but the turret goes down, and Pepper, what a cataclysm, lines up for it. LWX is firing from the stand. Oh, That's going to be Caveman going in, trying to get the turnaround still. It's zoning on the front. Meow, CC locked, chased down, and... Dead, Clement. He is dead. I, I, I appreciate your emphasis there. That yes, he is dead. In fact, but uh, no, that that had a lot of chances to go wrong. FBX were a bit lucky that they could actually pull that off. That was another triple uh, shockwave coming out from Easy Hoon again. So, you know, even it looked cool, the dropship move right there, there. There was a lot of risk associated with that. And I feel FBX. I have to say this, but they were a bit lucky getting away from all of that. Not of the AOE able to stack onto their team members and really finish them off. Hmm. And that's where we saw Vici attempt to get back into this. I mean, they break the inhibitor. They succeed in breaking the base at only the cost of their jungler. But like you said, there were a lot. There was a lot that could have gone wrong. Definitely, definitely there. Uh, the, uh, the the moves from FBX were still pretty cool, though. They got everyone in the Cataclysm and follow up with the Cannon Barrage. And, uh, you know, uh, with LWX over the wall attacking, that was it looked pretty good. But let's just watch this. First, Easy Hoon and Swift goes in. There's no damage coming out from the team members of FBX for the first couple of seconds. LWX actually loses his flash two seconds into the fight. However, with Kim Goon and his Guardian Angel, they are able to zone away the threats coming out from uh, from Vici, and that really was the difference difference maker there. Uh, Vici, essentially, their front line was not communicating with their back line. If mm. their front line didn't go in and give up their lives, they just backed out and were happy with the kill they got on Pepper. I, I think they actually could have still mounted a defense. Ever the Vici problem. Making sure that you've got clear communication with your team, that the front knows what the back is doing and the back knows what the front is doing. Yeah, that's it's like a Halloween costume that goes sideways. <laughs> Okay. When, when you're trying to be a horse, when the front doesn't know what the back is doing, the back is the front. Uh, okay. Have okay. you never been in a horse costume, Clement? Uh, no. We'll save that question for another time because there is another fight. Chris chasing onto Swift. Snow gets destroyed oh. by Cool and follow up from Pepper. This is what the communication should look like. Front to back, LWX working through the tanks one by one. Two kills to FPX. And FBX have just realized, you know, Vici, they don't have the communication abilities to react to our engages. So if we just go on, all on, on them super hard, we're just going to get a massive lead. And now they could very well have the end of the game in their sights. They've got super minions in that bottom lane. Baron is up in 60 seconds if they don't succeed here. But there's still a lot that could go wrong. The snare, the pull, the never move. LWX still alive, but only barely. He dies, and that's the 80 carry dead. Easy Hoon steps up as Swift will end up dying to Gimgoon, but 
that's going to be nearly the ace to try and end the game. Yeah, and it doesn't work out there. You can see why Orianna counters Kogma is so hard. You can just put the ball down and wait for the Kogma to walk in front of you. And when that Kogma is LWX, oh, you bet he's going to walk in front. Mm -hmm. That's that shotgun bucking back and hitting FPX in the face this time. But Cool should be able to escape with his life after he takes himself everything possible out of FPX's jungle. Now, Baron is up. The next dragon is Elder. That's going to be in about two or three minutes. And though two inhibs are down for Vici, we can see what happens when they hit their AoE. Yep, let's just walk, watch that again. This is a 4v3 scenario for both teams. They almost get Meow down. It was so close. If they were able to kill Meow instantly, I don't think any of this would have happened. But LWX goes into range with Easy Hoon and just stands there and trades with him. He doesn't even care about the Sidrani right out on him, so he actually loses the trade because he gets stunned up by the Sidrani. And though it is a 10,000 gold lead for FPX, we can see Vici still starting to retaliate in these fights. Easy who nearly has finished off his Rabidons. He's already got the Void Staff. Infinity Edge finished off for Snow. So he's able to get some big hits onto the back line if F uh, LWX tries to step forward again. Both of the, these teams, they don't really have a very good engage in terms of the uh, just 5v5. Ooh, oh, Shockwave oh. onto the front. Pepper is ready. Easy Hoon will finally die. His first death of the game. Realm Warp and it's three members. LWX walks it down through the back. A stun as Gim Goon goes forward. And they manage to get enough first to finish off Snow. It's not the Baron. It's a Baron bait as finally FPX chase off the kills they need. They just need the minion wave, though. I love the way how FPX was able to peel away the front line and go straight for the back in terms of snow. They used the Realm Warp after they already locked down the kills onto Easy Hoon and instantly finish off the Jin as well. This is what I meant about like not having a very straight 5v5, but with creativity, you can get wins. Meow leaps up and immediately gets slammed back down. FPX turn on to the Nexus, Clement. And in this show match, a golden Jarvan is what ends game two in style. FBX take the win, and we are going to game three. This is just showcasing FBX's execution edge over Vici Gaming so far. You know, they have these creative solutions, and when they go ham, they go all in. It's very hard to stop them. I will say Vici Gaming had a couple of chances, even in those team fights, to really stem the tide and actually win them outright, but they just don't have the ability to do so so far in their, like, uh, matur uh, maturation stage. Mm -hmm. Well... Hopefully they'll get some time to emerge from their cocoon. A beautiful butterfly is a better team as 35-55 is the time for that game one. FPX, it seems that by closing down on the chaotic play, pulling back on their aggression, is what allows them to actually make intelligent outplay decisions and just catch Vici, the worst team, uh, on the heel multiple times. Yeah, this was great play from Pepper. I feel like it was a much better game from him. He tracked the early game flawlessly and was able to leverage the advantage from the rise in the mid lane elsewhere on the map. They kept Kogma alive throughout most of the early game, and it was just really smooth sailing, really measured sailing from them, something we haven't seen from FBX. They were able to bring it much uh, into the later game as well. The key thing... Much fewer mistakes. Yes, well, of course, making mistakes generally a good thing in life, Clement. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. I just wanted to follow up on that uh, with an end oh, statement. Oh, okay. But I mean, like, FBX, they, clearly, when they don't make mistakes, they look better. Vici didn't seem to make that many mistakes themselves over the course of that series, but they just ended up getting outplayed by a more calm strategy from FPX. Yeah, this is the... Vici really don't have the reactive ability or the individual talent to really push oh, yeah. out a team that goes on them like with no hesitation. And this is why the bottom teams of the LPL are not bad macro teams. They're yes. actually bad individual teams. Mm -hmm. It's those mechanical outplays that ended up turning the game around. It's now time for our analysts, though, to break down what happened in that game, too. Thanks, guys. And Game 2 sees FPX tying up the series 1-1 one to one against Vici. None of these two teams want to go home just yet. It's their last match. They want to take it all three games. Yeah, exactly. It's our last day of the LPL. We have to have nine games today, Fish. Didn't you get your copy of the script? Nine games. That's right. Sorry, I misread the script. That was incorrect on my part. But yeah, so FPX able to bounce back after what was a disaster for Game 1.
Yeah, they each had so many individual mistakes. They seemed to clean it up a little bit, and they changed their composition as well. Yeah, and I, I wanted to take a step back and kind of look at these two teams holistically. Because okay. the thing is, is like while Vici did lose um, game number two, and while they're still not our favorites to take on the series, although we still have one more game to decide that, yep. I do want to say that Vici losing here, they still look better. You can actually see that Vici are learning. They're being proactive, and this was something, uh, a trait they didn't have before. Now... On the other side to FPX. Game one, you already said it, individual mistakes all over the road. I cannot believe I've seen so many chain chokes in a single game before, but FPX managed to do that. Game two, they kind of stumbled into their win conditions. And I kind of want to talk about the okay. the three things that I feel like I've pinpointed that make FPX successful. Hang on, we got three things by Frostgren. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first one is Gimgoon on a carry. I don't like it when they play 4-1. Very few teams in the LPL, in fact, only two teams in the LPL can successfully play a 4-1 strategy. It's Royal Never Give Up and it's Invictus Gaming. Gim Goon, he's predispositioned to want to play that way. It's why he likes the Fiora, has a horrendous win rate on the champion, and it's why Gangplank works better for him, because it's the perfect bridge between him wanting to play his 4-1 style and the easiest possible way to play a 4-1 style, because you have a global ultimate that you can just drop and help out your team anyway. So if they want to continue to do this, do it with the gangplank. If you don't get GP, I'm sorry, Gimgoon. Suck it up, play Orn like a man, and join up with your team. Because your team loves to team fight. So that's number one. What else do we need to see from Fun Plus Phoenix? So that's just one player. Number two is you have to protect Pepper. Pepper has said it over and over again in his interviews. He's a very spicy jungler. It's why he changed his name from Yihan to Pepper. He wants to invade. He wants to be in your face. And because of this meta, you need to have a mid who has wave priority. Yes, it helps when you unlock cool when he's able to puppeteer the rest of the map join out of his lane, make those roams and get plays going, but it's more important that he's there for Pepper, because that guy's going to stick his face in it whether he should or not, so you better make sure that your mid laner is prepared for it. And before we get into number three, Pepper was the MVP of that match coming in from the jungle. He picked it up, he was able to lock down a lot of those crucial late game fights and set up FPX for success. And he says it all the time, if you give me Jarvan, I will win the game, so don't give him Jarvan. Well, he got Jarvan that match, he won the game, FPX able to tie up the series. So it comes down to what is the final thing, because this is Pepper, Pepper was unlocked. He got the MVP. What's number three for FPX to win? LWX needs a leash. That guy cannot be on a champion that has any sort of gap closer. If he plays Tristana, he's putting his face in it. We saw it in game one in the last team fight. He immediately jumped forward, regretted his decision, and died. On Kogma, he's unable to do that, but he still gets to play a hyper carry. So the thing is, he's a hyper carry player. The Veins, the Kogmas, the Tristanas, LWX will always do it. We call him the shotgun. He likes to be in the face, but that kickback nails him in the face every single time. Give him a leash. Pull him back. So could FPX take the page out of the Rogue Warriors book, whereby, you know, SMLZ is a very quiet player. He doesn't quite tell the team what he's going to do, but Kalua seemed to have read him and understands how to protect him and how to play around that. Is that something FPX need to adapt and try and use with LWX? It means that Crisp needs to change up his champion pool. Normally, Crisp is playing engage-oriented champions. Kench was banned this game, but Tom Kench and Braum are probably the most important support picks for uh, LWX in particular. So support uh, defensive support picks, protecting uh, your jungle by pushing mid lane, and a 4-1 easy to navigate top laner. There you go, easy to navigate top laner, protect Pepper, and put LWX on the leash. Those are the three things the Frostgrim things that FPX need to do in order to pick up victories. They have one more match, and that will end their regular split here in the LPL. Let's go into a break. We'll be back in just a bit with game number three.